1996, Virginia, Brazil. A UFO crash lands, setting the whole town into a frenzy. Three girls just so happen to have a moment of contact with a strange being. The U.S. government finds out and covers everything up. Crap, material, bodies. All evidence is quickly recovered, never to be seen again. Since 1947, the military has been covering up all evidence of humanity being visited by a non-human intelligence. All documents have been sealed, lost, or damaged beyond recognition, leaving the U.S. government free to keep this pivotal information from the entire human race. But what gives them the right to make decisions on behalf of all of humanity? Acting as a god above all gods, they alter our reality, making most doubt their very perceptions. But we give them the power to rule, not the other way around. And some that have been brave enough to stand out and speak the truth have done just that. And now, we, the people, want the whole truth. Mission Control, please be informed there is a Santa Claus. Oh God, you wouldn't believe it. There are other craft out here, lined up on the far side of the crater's edge. They're on the moon with us. They're on the moon, watching us. Look at that thing. There's a whole fleet of them. Those are giant things. No, no, no. This is not an optical illusion. No one is going to believe ready for true disclosure without holding back any information we can decide how we see our reality on our own without Uncle Sam's hand stop holding our civilization back treating us like children the truth will reveal itself and you won't be able to stop it or deny it forever the truth is inevitable That's right, everybody. The truth is inevitable. Never stop pushing for disclosure. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Marquise, a.k.a. Dr. Door. Yes, Dr. Door is back. You all know um, we are on Helix Rock Radio. Remember, everyone, Helix Rock Radio is an app on both Apple and Android. But we also stream live on Helix Rock Radio um, at uh, rockradio.live. That is the online website that you can check out right now and tonight we have a two-time but for you only the first time guest uh we're bringing back jesse and let me tell you something about jesse beltron listen jesse was with us before and i'll make a quick statement about this i know that we we were supposed to do a live show and then i went on and i kind of went on a whole 30 minute rant about how i can't believe what happened our interview with jesse was deleted off my computer immediately after the show when i tried to upload it a few minutes beforehand it was it was gone it was just gone it wasn't anywhere i was looking right at it i played it and then after i played it for the first time to check to make sure it was good it was gone so this time i'm extra pre prepared and i'm going to do all kinds of uploading downloading backing up all that stuff we're not taking chances this time now Jesse is going to talk to us about something that recently has been in the news a lot because of Elizondo's new book, Eminent, and he's going to give us an alternate perspective, where, where from a medical perspective, by the way, because he he does work with a lot of medical professionals. He's been working um, for twenty years on this subject, specifically with implants. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about implants, y'all, and I don't think these implants are all alien. So let's bring Jesse on to talk about his research and his findings on this topic of implants. Jesse, welcome, my friend. Hey, Marquise. Nice to be back with you again, my friend. It is a pleasure to have you back. I'm really excited. Honestly, I've been I've been anticipating this interview, this re-interview for a long time. I did so much research on the document you sent me and trying to understand some of the very difficult concepts. There's a lot of information that you have to make sense of. You got to parse through it. And I did. So I'm prepared. I'm extra prepared this time. Uh, so let's let's talk about it. Tell me okay. in the in the viewers what you do um, okay. and why it's important. Yeah. Well, my name is Jesse Beltran. I am a retired firefighter paramedic from the city of Sacramento in California. I'm also a ma certified master hypnotist with a, a diploma in hypnotherapy. Uh, during my past careers, I was the president of an organization called the International Center 
against abuse of covert technologies. And that was started in 2010. Um, the reason it was uh, created, uh, it was, I met a gentleman by the name of Dr. John Hall, and he's the author of two books. The first book is A New Breed Satellite Terrorism in America. And the second book, um, which he writes in a couple of chapters in there about my work, uh, is called Guinea Pigs Technologies of Control. Now, the reason um, uh, ISA Act is what we'll call the International Center Against Abuse of Covert Technologies was created because I met Dr. Hall in Texas and we got on the topic about this phenomenon that was happening with uh, individuals coming to him. And what they were talking about is they said that they were all of a sudden having an acute onset of strange sounds. Um, pains to the head, migraines, nausea, vomiting, vertigo, uh, short-term, long-term uh, memory loss, and shocks to the extremities. Now, and this is identical to what uh, what has recently come into the forefront in the news. The Department of Homeland Security held a hearing on March 8th of 2024 about a phenomenon called the Havana Syndrome or anomalous health incidences. And what the Havana syndrome is, is uh, they say in 2016, our diplomats in Havana, Cuba, started complaining about an acute onset of strange sounds, pains to the head, migraines, dizziness, vertigo, uh, shocks to the extremities. And they believe, according to the Department of Homeland Security, that this was being caused by a directed energy weapon of some sort. So essentially a signal was being sent to them and affecting them in a negative way. What was also also interesting is they were finding um, changes in MRI scans that indicated that there may have been some type of concussion or brain injury in, in these individuals. Now I've been covering this pheno phenomena since 20, late 20, 2009, 2010. They say um, it started in 2016, but we know that this is also happening to civilians. They only claim or purport that this is happening to federal employees. But what's interesting is it is happening uh, to federal employees who are the best of the best, the top 1%. So our, our top diplomats, our, do, our top CIA agents, our top FBI agents, and, and some of their families members. Uh, and most recently, there are now uh, politicians here in the United States that are complaining about this phenomenon in Washington, D.C. area that, that it, this is happening to. So what, where are we at? What are we really getting at? Um, I felt that it was highly unusual or it would be logistically improbable to say that there's someone out there, a group of people out there who are singling out these individuals and pointing a directed energy weapon at them 24 seven, 365 days a year. Uh, from a logistical and personal standpoint, that's impossible. Now, was this happening? Yes, it was happening in some cases. There was a case in Florida, it's a classified case, where it was the Russians that were doing this to a federal employee. Um, what we are finding is what we did with ISA Act, uh, we started asking individuals to come to a meeting if they were experiencing these symptoms. And our first meeting was held in Sacramento, California, and we had 100 people show up. And every single one of them had identical symptoms, which are what I just expressed and explained, with very little deviation. Um, so we knew we were onto something. We had a second meeting where we started doing what's called an RF scan. Because they said they feel that they were receiving some type of signal, we said, okay, um, I'm gonna do what Dr. Hall was doing on a small scale, but I'm gonna do it on a large scale so we can take these subjective complaints and make them more tangible to where we can have measurements. And so what we used um, initially was a, a JM Pro, JM20 Pro. It's a frequency detector as a wand and basically you scan around the area of a person. And if there's some type of RF emission, um, the, the sensitivity is such that it will pick that up. Now we can calibrate it because we live in a wireless society, 
to be within two inches of the emission. Okay, so we started doing that in Davis. And what was interesting is this is what the numbers were showing us. The people who were complaining about this, the most affected were Caucasian women who were recently single, widowed, or divorced. Then it was Caucasian men, then African-American females, African-American males, Asians, and then it dwindled down in ethnicity from there. The same result happened in the Midwest, and then it changed a little bit when we got into the Chicago area and went towards the East Coast. The Caucasian criteria and African-American criteria flipped. African-American females were the most affected, then African-American males, then Caucasian, and then everything was consistent all the way down. There was an anomaly uh, in Virginia. I was asked to come and do RF testing um, with a group of military subcontractors there. And they were all military subcontractors. And they were all complaining about the same phenomena. Now, what, what are we finding? Um, the bottom line is this. Uh, we have cases now where we are pulling out biosensors out of these individuals. And I'll show your guests what those look like. I'm going to share my screen here. Entire screen. And do you see my screen? Yes. Yes, and there's yep, my the screen. Perfect. And this is what we're finding. Where's Mike? Now, this is a client who I scanned back in around 2011, 2012. And this was a, a lady, a very sweet lady. Um, and she had three implants pulled out of her. Here's a collection of three specimens. And I'm redacting the lab and the doctor's information and my client's information just so they don't get bombarded with people. Um, we want to continue to have them help us. But you can see here, it says that a foreign body specimen or advanced material specimen. Do you hear that background yep, noise there, Marquis? One second. Hey, Eric, can you hear me? Eric, can you hear me? He's working on his audio. Okay. Okay. So this this talks about the foreign body specimens. Yeah, I hear you. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Eric. And so real, real quick, um, we brought Eric, we brought Eric in. Sorry, Eric. Eric's a little bit was having some comp computer issues, but um, Eric Jesse, by all means, I'm sorry for the for, for the interruption there. Um, no Eric, problem. just to be brought up to speed, Eric. Uh, we're we're being uh, so Jesse is showing us some documentation of some of the. Uh, some of the work that he's been doing. So you'll probably recognize some of the, again, some of this information a little bit easier than I will. So just uh, just for now, we're just watching along, um, just so you know. All right, okay. Jesse, sorry. So, yeah, no no problem. So this is, this is the, the report um, analysis of the implants that were removed from my client. And these are foreign bodies. They're, they're talked about being advanced material specimens and that they are biosensors and what's really disturbing is the size that these things are now um, they are down to close to the nano size spectrum and this is what they look like today um, they're, they're these our bodies do not reject them and our bodies will uh, basically uh, grow and encapsulate them but these are actually nano wires, nano array two, silicon nano arrays um, that are protruding from that specimen. Um, there are various shapes and sizes, and it's difficult to, to see right here because um, it just looks like human human tissue, but it's not. Um, and, and they're all different shapes and, and sizes and arrays. So this was pulled out of my client and we have several cases that these are being pulled out of people who are complaining about the exact same symptoms as the Havana syndrome. Um, they have come a long ways. I'll show everyone what they initially were about 20, 20 to 25 years ago. 
this here is a cancerous tumor. But if you look here at the tweezers at the end of them, this is actually an implant. It's an ID chip. Mm -hmm. Now, this was removed by a gentleman who I spoke to. His name is Bob Boyce. And he was an inventor of a high efficiency engine. And he, he had said to me that he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. So he thought he was actually going to die from this. And how he found out he had an implant is he was testing for radio frequency leakage out of uh, his inventions in what is called a Faraday cage. And when the wand, like I showed everyone, this wand, accidentally went by his shoulder and it pinged and it'll do exactly that. This is what it did when it went by its sh his shoulder. So he thought it was odd, went and had an x-ray and lo and behold, they see this implant surrounded by this cancerous tumor. So he had surgery, it went to pathology. I asked him what happened to the implant after it went to pathology. He said it disappeared. So I said, but the good thing was, this is cancer went into remission. But then it came back very aggressively. So he went and he rescanned himself in the Faraday cage, and they found a second implant. This time they were smarter about it, and they maintain a chain of custody, and they were able to analyze the implant and trace a serial number back to an NSA database. Hmm. Um, his attorney tried; they were trying to sue. And it was stalled there. And what they were told is this was a matter of national security. Now, in his so case, that's crazy that to... his sample disappeared. I mean, I work in pathology labs, and we've got stuff that's, you know, a hundred years old in there. And yeah, for something um, to disappear is almost unheard of. Somebody yeah, well, actively why... was going after that. Yeah. So that's exactly what happened. And here's the thing. He, he loved Mountain Dew. He said he was in his office one day and his business partner brought him a Mountain Dew. And when he drank the Mountain Dew, the next thing he remembers is waking up in his office three days later, um, mm -hmm. not realizing uh, what had happened and he lost track of time. But it turns out his business partner was an ex-NSA employee. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what happened to him. Now, there's another case that I want to share with everyone, and this is going to be our David Larson case, and he was a politician in Southern California. And now I want everyone to understand this was um, around the 20 year mark ago. They pulled out 10 biosensors out of his person. And he was experiencing the exact same symptoms that I explained earlier in the show. Now realize that 20 years ago, how small they were. They're various shapes and sizes. Oh. Really pay attention to this one because this is the one I want to focus on on what's been uh, top, the, the top topic in the news about the Lou Elizondo uh, phenomena about the alien implant. But mm. notice that this is the letter on a penny. Look how small these implants were. Yeah, this is um, this is twenty years ago. Just to just again, just to reiterate that this isn't today. This is way back in the early two thousands. Yeah. yeah. So now they're even smaller than that. Those specimens that I showed your viewers at the beginning, you can put hundreds of those in the tip of a needle today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna stop sharing here for a second. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of questions, but I'm not sure if you're ready for the questions for me for me to ask them yet. Yeah. Um, um, there, there's a couple of things I need to fill in the gaps that I forgot to mention. In, in my journey in scanning Americans, um, other countries started to catch wind about what I was doing. And so I was invited uh, by uh, other government agencies to not only come and test their diplomats and family members and employees for this phenomenon, but they asked me to bring people over that I knew or felt very strongly that it's quite possible that for whatever reason, there is an emission being detected around their person. So you can't say that they have an implant with this. You have to, you can only say what the equipment is designed to do. And our equipment is only designed to test for RF emissions. So we had to have an environment because we live in a wireless society 
to test these individuals in an environment that was absent of these frequency measurements that we were detecting or able to block those frequencies out. So we were invited to do testing in what's called an anechoic chamber. And an anechoic chamber is a very robust Faraday cage. And I'll show your, your guests what that looks like here. And um, so anyway, it, it is designed to block out huge frequency spectrums. And these, these anechoic chambers cost millions and millions of dollars. There's our phase three report. I have it here. I apologize. I don't. Where the heck is it? Oh, well, anyway, I'll, I'll send you some images of what that okay. looks like a little later yeah. so you can use for your, your show. Uh, stop sharing. I remove I remove the share. No worries. Yeah. Okay. No so problem. so okay. So that is how when we started, we test had control groups, so people who were not affected afflicted by this in the anechoic chamber, and we would test for frequency emissions. We we're getting zero. I mean, the meters read zero. But when we brought in the individuals who were tested in the preliminary scans and we put them in that environment, mm -hmm. we were picking up the frequencies in those very focal points that were that we had marked and indicated um, in the preliminary scans. So yeah. it it was conclusive that the frequency emission somehow was being emitted from them. Okay. Now you can superimpose all the people who had the symptoms that usually come to me, the civilians, and they all were identical as far as where the, the positive results were around their person. Then you can take the military because they were slightly different, but identical and put them over each other and they would light up in the same location. Then you can take people who have been incarcerated who were also identical, but slightly different than the military and the, and the general population, not the general population, but those victims who were complaining about having these symptoms and they would line up, okay? So this next document I'm about to share with everyone is shocking um, to say the least. And I, I don't usually try to inflict emotion, but because it's that um, much of a smoking gun that it's, it, it's, it's important that everyone pays close attention. Now it's a five page report and I'll read through it very quickly, but uh, Marquise, I gave you partial of the report, but I'm going to give you the full report because okay. this is pretty damning. Okay. Um, let me pull this up. You ready for me this year? Yep. Go ahead and share. What up? Okay. So this is a lawsuit that was in uh, filed in Sacramento, California, so Sacramento County. And it's called the Devon, Don DeVore case. And Don DeVore was an uh, RN for the Department of Corrections. And she became a whistleblower and became part of this uh, phenomenon. But now we know it's a program. And in her exhibits that were admitted in court, this is exhibit two, um, she intercepted this document, and this is how she fully understood um, why she was having the symptoms that she was having. Now, this is by the Intelli Connection, a security division of IBM. This is confidential, limited distribution only for level, level nine uh, communication. So this is top level people, and at the end of this report, it tells you who these top level people were, at least what capacity they had to have held in order to receive this document okay um, this is about a 2020 neural chip implant and it says the control of crime will be a paramount concern in the 21st century we must be ready for our security products when the demand for them becomes popular 
our research and development division has been in contact with the Federal Bureau of Prisons, the California Department of Corrections, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and the Massachusetts Department of Corrections to run limited trials of the 2020 neurochip implant. We have established representatives of our interest in both management and institutional levels within these departments. I hope people pay close attention to that. That means they're hiring their own personnel within the Department of Corrections in these facilities. Okay. Federal That's regulations, great. yeah. Federal regulations do not yet permit testing of implants on our prisoners, but we have entered in contractual agreements with the privatized healthcare professional with privatized healthcare professionals and specified correctional personnel to do limited testing of our products. We have also had major success in privately owned sanitariums with implant technology. We need, however, to expand our testing to research how effective the 2020 neural chip implant performs in those identified as the most aggressive in our society. Limited testing has produced a number of results. In California, several prisoners were identified as members of a security threat group. Um, they always do this to protect us. They were brought to the health services unit at Pelican Bay and tranquilized with advanced sedatives developed by our Cambridge, Massachusetts laboratory. The implant procedure takes 60 to 90 minutes depending upon the experience of the technician. We are working on a device which will reduce the time by as much as 60%. The results of the implants on eight prisoners yielded the following results. Implants served as surveillance monitoring devices for the threat group. And later on in this report, you'll understand that these monitoring devices, not only do they hear, um, but they can actually visualize what's going on by reading the EEG patterns uh, from this technology. Implants disabled two subjects during an assault on a correctional staff. So they can completely incapacitate you. Universal side effects in all eight test subjects revealed that when implants were set at 116 megahertz frequency, all subjects became lethargic and slept on an average of 18 to 22 hours per day. All subjects refused recreation periods for 14 days during the 116 megahertz test evaluation. Seven of the eight subjects did not exercise at all. Well, if you're lethargic, you're not going to do that. Uh, each subject was monitored for aggressive activity during the test period, and the findings are conclusive. That out of the eight test subjects, it, they exhibited no aggression, even when provoked. Each subject experienced only minor bleeding from the nose and ears 48 hours after the implant uh, due to initial adjustment. Each subject had no knowledge of the implant for the test period and each implant was retrieved under the guise of a medical treatment. It should be noted that the test period was for less than two months. However, during the period, substantial data was gathered by our research and development teams, which suggests that the implants exceeded expected results. One of the major concerns of the security and research development team was that the test subject would discover the chemical imbalance during the initial adjustment period, and um, the test would have to be scrubbed. However, due to the advanced technological developments in the sedatives administered, the 48-hour adjustment period can be attributed to prescription medication given to those test subjects after the implant procedure. So they're going to blame it on the drugs instead of the actual implants that they put in you and your body's trying to adjust to these foreign bodies. One of the concerns raised by the research and development team was the cause of the bleeding and how to eliminate that problem because unexplained bleeding might cause the subject to inquire further about his routine visit to the infirmary or other health care facility. The security windfall from the brief test period was enormous. Security officials now know several strategies employed by this gang that they were uh, tracking that facilitate the transmission of illegal drugs and weapons into their correctional facilities. One intelligence officer remarked that while they cannot use the information, they have in court in a court of law they now know who to watch and what outside connections they have the prison at Soledad is now considering transferring three subjects to vacaville where we have engaging implant research our technicians have promised that they can do three 2020 neuro chip implants in less than an hour 
Solidad officials hope to collect information from the trio to bring a 14-month investigation into drug trafficking by correctional officers to a close. Here's where it really gets damning, if that wasn't damning enough. Yeah. Essentially, the, <laughs> essentially, the implants make the unsuspecting prisoners a walking, yeah. talking recorder. Did you hear that? that? Essentially, the implants make the unsuspecting prisoners a walking, talking recorder of every event he comes into contact with. There are only five intelligence officers and the commissioner of corrections who actually know the full scope of the implant testing. The Massachusetts Department of Corrections has already entered high-level discussions about releasing certain offenders to the community with the 2020 neurochip implant. Our people are not altogether against the idea. However, attorneys for the Intelli Connection have advised against the implant technology outside strict control settings. Under the present governmental structure, our liability would be enormous. While, again, they're going to try to change our laws. While we have a strong lobby in Congress and various state legislatures favoring our product, we must proceed with utmost caution on uncontrolled use of the 2020 neural chip implant. If the chip was discovered in use, not authorized by law and the procedure traced to us, we could not endure for long the resulting publicity and the liability payments. Massachusetts officials have developed the, an intelligence branch from their fugitive task force squad that would do limited test runs under tight controls with pre-release subjects. Corrections officials have dubbed the potential test subjects the insurance group. The name derives from the concept that the 2020 implant ensures compliance with the law and allows officials to detect misconduct or violations without question. A retired police detective from Charles, Charleston, Massachusetts, new with the intelligence unit had asked us to consider using the 2020 neural chip on hardcore prisoners suspected of bank robberies or armed robberies. He stated Charleston would never be the same. We'd finally know what was happening before they knew what was happening. Okay. Yeah. This thing can read your EEG. This thing can read your thoughts. Um, and this is a big complaint of the, the groups that I've worked with over the last 20 years. It says, we will continue to explore community uses of the 2020 chip, but our company rep will be attached to all law enforcement operations with an extraction crew that can be on site in two hours from anywhere at any time. We have, we have um, a connection discussion group uh, who is meeting with the director of security at Florence, Colorado Federal Super Maximum Security Unit. The initial discussions with the director have been promising and we hope to have the R&D unit at this important facility within the next six months. ADX Florence um, CO has uh, replaced Marion, Illinois as a federal prison system, ultra maximum security unit. Legislative and executive branch efforts continue to legalize the implant technology. That's where we're at, folks. Without consent? This is all without, without consent? consent. Without consent. But for consent. the moment, it, at least according to the document, to the to the complaint here, this is only on at, for this is only on prisoners, though. Okay. Did you read do you remember the part where they're gonna let them loose into the community? I, okay, so Yeah. And so here here's the bottom line. These implants we have removed in several cases prisoners we've removed these implants general civilians with no connections to being a federal employee we've removed these implants um and and that's the issue that everyone should be concerned about um it's not you can't deny that it's not there we have the evidence no, uh, we have we have the pathology reports we have toxicology reports because these guys have um, you have higher levels of metals that are detected in your your person um, and see these were all clear indicators um, but you have to paint up you have to get the evidence to paint the picture before you'll get a doctor that is willing to remove these from you now we're we're we're, we're having a little issue now with physicians that are willing to remove these implants even though we have all of the evidence um 
these doctors are being threatened with losing their medical license if they remove these. And that's where we're at. Yeah, and this is really bad. Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to make. I feel like you just dropped a bombshell here, man. I don't even know what to make of that. Um, I will say that during our during this conversation, I've been trying to get the documents on my end. <laughs> so on my phone, they load fine because I've got some some security measures, but on my computer, they're not loading at all. I'm not saying that there's anything that's you know nefarious here, but it's just I, I can't I can only view them on my phone. That's why I was looking down when we were you were reading that. I was looking down at the documents here on my end. Um, when was this document? When was this complaint filed? This was in 2019. Yeah, this was recent. This wasn't that well yeah. recent it, relatively can compared yeah. to the the beginning of this whole program. That's um, we're, oh my, we're 20 so, years ago where you were we were still pulling out implants out of people 20 years ago and and remember how small they were so these things are nano size you can literally put yeah. hundreds of these in the tip of a needle and and now we're getting into an area of you you talk about science fiction star trek um where they're now utilizing nanotechnology that is self-replicating um and self-assembling um so this you... stuff now moves and um, the, the physician who removed these implants, um, she is an elite expert in this field. And she has given me the documents that show that this technology exists and this is what we're, we're looking at. Um, yep. that, that array, I'll show you the, the arrays, these nanowire arrays. Um, and this was thanks to her. And I'm so appreciative of her trusting me with this material now. Yeah, um, let me pull it up. One second. Pull it up here. Let me see. So within these silica nanotubes, this is uh, close up under you know high powered microscopes, electron my microscopes. They almost look like hair fibers, and then that's what people would mistake it for. But these are actually crystalline um, silicone uh, nano arrays, and you need a, an electron microscope in or, order to see these. And these are all crystalline structures, um, and you can see this is uh, images synthesized silica nanotube structures usually form following the trapping of silicon nano crystals. So that last specimen that we showed you on my client that were pulled yep. out, this is what was sticking out of those arrays. Um, so it's here, it's now, we're, we're dealing with it. And what's even crazier is that I met recently with an investigative science reporter and I had an interview with her and she had shared with me something that was even more, you know, if this wasn't disturbing enough, yeah, this wasn't disturbing she, enough. She just, she, she, <laughs> she, just, she shared, yeah. she shared with me that in the seventies, that the definition of a human was changed, and she says that the reason it was changed is because this nanotechnology has been in the works for quite some time. Um, we're dealing with overpopulation issues, sustainability issues, and so they're gonna they 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 felt that, um, and this is not me speculating. There was an article right. called New World Vistas. It was a declassified document that I, I shared with you on our first interview, where they talked about um, biological processes, and they it was the Air Force bringing the greatest minds together about how to keep the United States Air Force uh, 50 years in the future a superpower. And they talk about using this exact same technology uh, with the ability to imprint false, taking a memory from one individual and imprinting in another, um, just imprinting false memories, uh, experiences. So if this is done, um, you're going to physiologically believe and feel um, that you had this experience. Now, I'm a hypnotist for a reason. I've been doing hypnosis for 20 years. 
But what, as my journey developed, I started to see those who were most affected by this. And it happened to be people who were highly suggestible. Now, if you put this technology in someone who's highly suggestible, you can get them to do anything. If you know how to use language in a way, um, yeah, you can get people program. who are in trans. Yes, same. It's all, that's exactly what it is. But here's, here's what that scientific journalist was sharing with me. With this nanotechnology, they're changing our DNA. And if they change our DNA to an extent that we are no longer human, they can execute a patent on you. And if you read right here, it says, and this is talking about the self-replicating tiles, which are the self-replicating nano that I'm talking about. And without getting too over people's heads, because uh, this, this, you have to know genetics a little bit, but basically what it talks about, um, and I'm gonna put this in, in layman's terms, you've got mom and dad, mom and dad have an offspring, but you've put this nanotech that's self-replicating that can attach to your DNA, and then your offspring have offsprings. And it says this system in approximately six generation uh, in an advantageous environment will change the species oh. completely. This is what the scientific journalist just shared with me. And I've never been stumped. I mean, I, I, I'm, this stuff is tough enough to, uh, to deal with. But when she shared that with me, it all made sense. And this is, this is something that all human species needs to have a serious conversation about. And we need to band together and we need to start talking about how do we protect ourselves from this technology that's outpacing our laws, let alone the, the criminality that is being done. Um, yeah. the, the Nuremberg Code says that it has to be full consent before you do some type of experimentation on someone. And we're violating that. Yeah, and this, is, by the way, is a real court case. I looked it up. Um, mm -hmm. But the, some of the information that you shared is not a part of the publicly available information. No. So are you allowed to show that information? Like, is it is it like a, you're not like violating well, any? No, I, I've got this to through public means, so I'm not violating anything. Okay. It's not. Okay. So here's here's where that court case stands. It was I just learned this Sunday that it was settled out of court. That was very disappointing because we were hoping that this would go all the way through. Yeah. Um, and then there, this would go to a jury and then there would be a judgment. And the reason that was important is because this would help everyone else who's being affected by this. I mean, these powers are, I mean, these people, these organizations, these institutions are, they're too powerful. You can't just fight them. Well, um, we're talking, so all of these implants, by the way, were, were, did, have been removed, have not been alien. They've all been traced back to a medical facility. Yeah. Yeah, that's separate. Medical manufacturer. That, yeah. I yeah. believe that your research is completely separate from the other issue, which is the alien issue, unless mm. you are you subscribe to the idea that there are humans at work in, in conjunction with the human the the non human intelligences, which some people believe, but there's no evidence a part of this that's even that even suggests that. So I can't I mean, I'm not going yeah, well, there. I'm just saying yeah, well uh, we we have to use a we, we take it from a, a very objective approach, okay? Yeah. If this implant technology exists, and if it is now in the nano size, and now it's self-replicating and self-assembling, that means you send a frequency to them, and they will do whatever you want them to do, okay? Yeah. Um, including move. Uh, you encapsulate this nanotech around a sensor. You can move that sensor wherever you want throughout the body. And, and this is where, where medicine is, is trying to say that this is beneficial to humans. We can cure diseases. We can, you know, clear arteries. We, we, we can focus on specific cells that are cancerous. And this is a wonderful thing. Yes, it would be a wonderful thing, but only if it's used in, in the right way. But if you want to use it in a, in a negative way as a weapon or a social engineering process, um, then then it's not so good. Because, uh, again, you and I were talking about the topic of is there really free will? Um, right. For sure. 
there's not going to be free will if you allow this to continue. Now, my feeling based on the data, what we are dealing with and me meeting with high level officials, um, with there's some information that I can't disclose because it's classified, but what we're dealing with right now, I strongly believe and what the data is, is really leaning towards is we're in a arms race. President Putin gave a, 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 a report to the Politico and he said that the first superpower to master psychotronic weapons will be the superpower to rule the world. Okay. Now, Colonel Egren testified at the Department of Homeland Security uh, in front of Congress on March 8th that this phenomenon is happening on every continent except for Antarctica. Um, but they said it was only happening to federal employees. They said that because they only address federal employees, they don't they can't confirm or deny whether it's happening in the civilian population. Um, so this is why I believe we are probably in the midst of an arms race unless there is a gentleman out there who is a firefighter who works for Raytheon and he is in Antarctica. He claims he's been giving testimony. He's been on some big platforms uh, recently and I, um, I would love to have a chat with him. Um, but he claims that there is a system of arrays in the snow hmm. there that is the reason behind this. And he says this, this system, this t antenna array or microscopic array is a, can communicate, transmit and receive information faster than the speed of light. And his yep. claim is, is because they need to communicate with our space force. And it's, it's still bugging me in the back of my mind that Colonel Egren said it's happening on every continent with the exception of Antarctica. And this firefighter claims that the signal is coming from there. So if we're not in an arms race, then this is pure experimentation on a global level. Um, and that's where we're at. I'm looking for who is the name of the person that mentioned about the fast the the communication that's faster than light. Oh, uh, he was on Dan Bongino's podcast recently, and Bongino wants us to share it all. Um, I can't remember his name right did, now. Did he speak? Did he speak at the lead, the latest uh, Stephen Greer uh, disclosure conference? I, I was a few years ago. I think maybe a year or two ago. I think it was years right at, actually. It was right after the David Grush congressional hearing. Stephen Greer did one with uh, with a couple of people that claimed claimed to be whistleblowers, and the one person said that they had, I believe, in Antarctica this this faster than light communication. wasn't clear as to what they would use it for. I mean, there was some speculation that he had, but this reminds me of that that there was this this alleged uh, faster than light communication. Um, Eric Hecker, that's it. That's it. Okay, that's the name. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the name. Yeah. Apparently, he has this. Uh, affinity to stay away from hypnotherapists. I thought as a brother firefighter, which <laughs> would, we never yeah. turn each other away, that he would talk no. to me. But he says um, he doesn't speak to hypnotherapists for some reason. I don't know what that that's about. But um, because we're, I mean, if we're truly trying to help people, um, we would definitely want to make sure that uh, we we share information. Um, and so yeah. hopefully that'll happen in the future. So. Yeah. I want to read something. Do you, there is a document that was released as a part of a multi-slide presentation. I believe uh, um, uh, that was released. Elizondo, Lou Elizondo allegedly was behind the slide, or someone in that circle, um, called slide nine. And there were multiple slides, but this one was of note. And in this slide nine, there was mention of psychotronic weaponry. And I'm going to read that what it says to you here. Actually, you know, let me just bring that up on the screen so that you can see it, too, because I'm not just. So what it says is that there's uh, imagine a scenario where individuals are unknowingly influenced by low level widespread psychotronic signals leading to mass psychological shifts in voting behavior or public opinion, effectively swaying political landscapes, cognitive human interface, CHI. This is a part of the document. Um in a cyber warfare scenario, 
an operative could remotely connect to an adversarial, I'm sorry, an adversary's neural lace, causing them to experience false memories or hallucinations that could lead to erratic decision making or inadvertent disclosure of secrets. There's, let me just <clears throat> see here. There, there's a couple. Well, here's a slide. This is the slide. Uh, the science for an enemy of the United States to manipulate both physical and cognitive environments in order to penetrate U.S. facilities, influence decision makers, and prom uh, compromise national security. And this includes what you mentioned, psychotronic weaponry, cognitive human interface, penetration, solid services, instantaneous sensor disassembly, alterations. Now, the rest of it kind of goes into something a little different. But the suggestion is that there is a potential enemy that has that ability, half of which is what you're mentioning here. The other half is something that you haven't mentioned. It's not a part of the conversation here, but well, that we makes cover me about 90 percent of that 90. I don't talk a lot about those fringe topics about this phenomenon right. because it's very hard for the general population to, to, to allow it to be palatable. So you have to spoon feed this. Right. But if everyone really knew what this technology absolutely does, um there would be outrage um it, it it's not a good situation but we need so, we, we, we need to start waking up awareness is, is key i think this conversation is what yeah. brings awareness i mean honestly this is a probably this is one of the most terrifying conversations i've had about any of these topics to be honest i've i've, I've heard other things that are if true scary but this is something that's tangible this is like we've got documents you brought a court case again some of which i couldn't find the public the information you presented the, the the full documents i didn't get all all that information but i did verify that it's real it's a real court case it's a real document yeah, yeah and um, like i said she just settled out of court which is and she's got a gag on it now that they means in, in her settlement yeah. she can't talk and i wanted to directly talk with her because in her lawsuit and me being a former firefighter, particularly in my region, um, she also sued the fire departments um, in her lawsuit. And so I was really curious about that. Why did the fire department get involved? Why was the fire department listed in her lawsuit? But I don't know if we'll ever get that answer. Do you remember the incident in Rendlesham Forest? Refresh my memory because I've, I've, I've heard it's I've heard. This happened on like the line between I think it was a, the US and UK or um, something like that. They the border. There was like a joint military operation going on where they um, <clears throat> let me see. I'm going to look. I'm looking up his name right now. But there were a couple of men who went out and they saw, there was this 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 craft that was seen in the woods moving around a uh, light shining. They thought it was a they claimed it was a uh, uh, a ta uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Oh, I can't think of what it's called right now. A, a light lighthouse. Um, like a lighthouse. beacon. Yeah. Um, so Colonel uh, Charles Halt was on the scene there. This happened in 1980. So let me just read this here because I didn't. I don't want to ruin the details. Um, so it was uh, the incident took place in Reynoldsham Forest near RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge the two Royal Air Force bases um, used by the U.S. Air Force in Suffolk, England. So that's what that that's where that location was. But there were a couple of men that went out and they saw this and they said they got these binary code from the they, they saw the craft. It was a shiny black, you know, um, triangular type of craft or whatever she was. It had a it had writings like hieroglyphics around it. Um, it was hovering silently in the woods. There was some kind of a mist surrounding it. They felt kind of weird around it. They recorded the entire thing. Um, they, they believe there may have been lost time on and on and on. There's a, you, it's, it's a really interesting incident. You should if you get a chance to check it out, but ultimately that I, man, I, I, I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. So he won a court case of, of, because he, he got medical implicate. He had medical effects from this incident Correct. and he had allegedly an implant as a consequence of, of coming into contact with this craft. Um, <clears throat> Gary Nolan talks about people being involved in some of these encounters. Now I'm going to relate this back with what they believe are non-human encounters where afterwards they have um, implants. And Elizondo talks about this as well, that there's, there's a whole implant phenomena that is associated with sometimes the phenomena, meaning non-human intelligence, 
whatever you want to parse them as. And so I'm, but now what you're seeing is that there's an entirely different phenomenon that's happening in, at the same time, this is a simultaneous event. This is happening at the same time, or maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. It, yeah. And, and that's what I said. We need to rule out um, because you can put false memories in people. You can put false right. experiences in people. And it, it, me being, me knowing with my experience with hypnosis, um, if you want someone to experience something and they truly believe it's happened, it's very easy to do if you have the right suggestibility type. Um, and, and so, you know, this is, this is why I, I say we, we have to tread lightly. Um, we know for a fact we're pulling these implants out of people. They are being traced back to medical facilities. Um, one of the implants, uh, uh, there's a case, I think I can, sh well, I, I better not, but it's it, until I, I, I verify, but there was an, there another case where this implant was pulled out and they actually have um, the insignia of the manufacturer on it. And um, it's a, it's a manufacturer. It has to do with our space program. So there's a, there's, man, I, I don't want to, I, I feel like it would be kind of a, an insult to, to mention the, a, a theory um, within ufology that can be an insulting to the conversation here. But I do wonder if, I mean, if we're going to open our, our, our minds to implications, you know, if, if they, if the intelligence is something that is, whether it be interdimensional or extraterrestrial, it's irrelevant. If it were to be more intelligent then warfare through kinetic warfare would be kind of an illogical or primal thing. It'd be very, very primitive to, to have a kinetic warfare. But if you were to somehow, um, get some of the, some of the, 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 you know, the species to essentially turn against their own to do these things, to implement some of these things in, in our population through these means, then, I mean, in essence, you could win a war without ever having to fire a bullet or in their case, a, a space ray to be, to be yeah, physician. Well, well, I, I mean, it's during it, Af Afghanistan, they were giving up because they thought Allah was speaking to them. We did that. Right. Um, uh, you know, I, I hate, I hate talking about this, but Myron May, uh, the attorney out of Florida, uh, killed three people at, at the research facility there at the university. We have, um, Aaron Alexis, um, who killed the 16 people at the Navy yard, uh, the Navy yard on the East coast. And he wrote, this is my ELF weapon. They both contacted me before they did these things. I had no clue they were going to do it but they were asking for help and crying out for help. And there are no resources for help, by the way, for any civilians, if you're, you're a civilian right now. Um, but they were crying out for help. They were complaining with these exact same symptoms. Uh, but what happens is initially when you're subjected to this, you're in either fight or flight mode. Right. And their personality types were that they were fighters. And so they went and they did what they did, believing that they were going after the people who did it to them, but it's not, I can, most assure you it's not it um so let's zoom out let's like what would be the purpose of of any of this let's let's just assume for a moment i mean i'm i regardless of what i believe let's assume this is real right mm -hmm. and that the that there's an nsa or cia or some kind of intelligence um organization that is working on these implants in human beings for the purpose of manipulating certain portions of the population for political aims or social changes or whatever. Why? What per, I mean, I mean the, 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 the simple and rhetorical answer is it's power easy. control, right? It's, it's, it's very it's simple. Control. It's right. control. It's that simple. But, but there are better ways that are far more subtle and effective and, and equally effective than, than implants. So why do something that's so invasive? So, I mean, eventually, if you're talking about the level of resistance, if found out, would be would be catastrophic. I mean, if the public were to to on a grand scale discover that this is a thing, right? If, I mean, even for me, I'm like, holy, like this is a you guys need to like pay attention, to the community. Like this isn't just like <laughs> this is all of us. This affects all of us. If this is something that gets yeah. out to the public, if it is a thing, it may already have been. I mean, you you got to understand the implications shootings and you know things like that the implications are i mean most people aren't crazy enough to do that but
but somehow only one or two people here they're doing it why aren't there more there are plenty of crazy one or more there's not one or more here here's the thing um if you look throughout history uh the united states is no stranger to experimenting on its people okay they use this thing what is called the rule of law which is above our constitution apparently um i keep asking for the book but, but no one can show me but this is this is what the people in power refer to the rule of law and um we've done this to stigia experiments on african americans in chicago let, yeah, I, letting yeah, syphilis yeah. syphilis yeah. run yeah. wild just to see what it would do what no. what 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 mindset does that yes. you know and, and then and then the LSD experiments and, and, and so forth that they're using on Johns, they go after the lowest in society, um, the drug users, the Johns, the people who are incarcerated. Right. Then, and if with this, it's very easily to get diagnosed with a mental health disorder. Right. And so then you're put into psychiatry and then you're, they shut you up that way uh, or they drug you and then you become re-victimized again. Um, we're not a stranger to doing this. And so that, and if you, you know, that in itself answers that question. You can't, you know, it, it's one thing to say, well, gosh, that's hard to believe because, you know, we're, we're, we're the scenarios that, that prove that. Well, President Clinton apologized about to us about yeah, it. For that. But they never, they never can. And they never gave, they never made it right for these people who lost their lives, who became deformed, um, who were affected for generations genetically because of what they created you know it's it, it's not far-fetched to say you know either this is a, a either it, it, it's a mass experimentation or they're so confident now that they have control over us that they can manipulate us um and this is a mi- manipulation technology on steroids or we're in the midst uh, uh, of a, a arms race you know, but the bottom yeah, line is, is we're pulling the proof. We're pulling the proof out. It's in yeah. your face. So now we got to deal right. with it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, another thing is yeah. like, I, I always think about again, what's the what's the what's the end game here? And I think you pretty much said it. If it's the what look what Monsanto did right with the suicide the suicide gene uh, the suicide seeds, um, where they genetically altered these seeds to die after one lifespan, um, and then when their when their crops were you know blowing into the using through the wind and then, blowing into and now now you've stolen our patent remember I told, that that scientific yeah. journalists talked about yeah. they want to get a patent on us yeah and and if and through this i mean if you were to i mean they have already made corporations people and given them literal rights uh like constitutional rights they could in essence if they wanted to through legal means they could manipulate if they were able to change our biology through generational you know genetic manipulation mm-hmm then they wouldn't have, I mean, you essentially, I don't know. I just, I I don't, my imagination isn't going far enough here, but I think my concern is that that's the problem. It's my imagination, not, not the facts. The facts Mm -hmm. are clear. The, the, the fact is that there is an, 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 at least in, in, in essence, a, 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 an admitted attempt to change the biology of at least again, a portion of the population through genetic manipulation over generations. If that, if that, if that article you were, you showed me earlier, um, it is, yeah, is that's out of JSTOR. It's a, it's, um, a very, uh, distinguished and, and reputable research, um, website. It has university research. It's current, um, and has past and yeah. present. Yeah. Mm. Again, I still wonder who's, who's behind it and why, and how is that? Well, how do we, Uh, yeah yeah so here's who has the technology for sure the united states has it uh russia has it yeah russia has it um and they're probably ahead of us in the game um then you have china and you have the uk yeah i mean there was the the havana syndrome as as we mentioned earlier and you said about how it's affecting diplomats and military personnel and people of consequence people that Mm -hmm. are making decisions in our in our world in our in our in the united states especially there that um that slide nine said about the ability to manipulate decision makers. And that's a pretty big concern. If Russia is able of 
implanting our, our diplomats, <laughs> then why should we ever even come in contact with them? I mean, the president can go over there, drink some water and be affected. Apparently, I mean, in, in theory, it's that it small now. It's that small now. It's that small now. And and when you start yeah, getting nano size, it'll it'll cross through your your membranes and your internal organs. And um, they're yeah. now saying it'll co cross the blood brain barrier. You know, um, you know, I feel and, like. Sorry, I apologize. It kind of feels like we're just like we are not. Our institutions are not as well you know, oiled as we think they are. They're in a lot of disarray. Um, there are competing factions that we, I mean, even within our, within each intelligence agency, there are competing factions within each of them and they compete with each other at scale. The CIA will compete with the NSA, will compete with the FBI, will compete with local law enforcement ad infinitum with all these organizations, the U S uh, the, 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 uh, army and, or the air force and the Navy do do not communicate. Together. They actually fight for information, for intel. They fight for technology. They compete against each other, in, essentially for like for dominance with 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 different things. And that's that's those are our those are our defenses. Those are the defenses of the country, and they're hiding information from each other, which could lead to a national security threat in itself. That that alone could lead to a to a to a catastrophe. So to me, it's like we're just like we're a bunch of a bunch of barbarians just like with really high tech stuff, just trying to see what sticks. I mean, we mask it with the, with the illusion of, of like a well-oiled machine where they have all these, they're very intelligent with like the legality of things using private contractors and so forth. But and really they're not, they're just, they're just winging it. They're using what they're using systems that we have now to hide their, their, their activities, but they're kind of just winging it. I mean, it's, yeah. it, this is insane. Well, I don't know if it's winging because this, you know, if you look at that New World Vistas report that I gave you, just th that little, little ep excerpt, I'll make sure that you get the full reports. Yeah, please, um, please. Because it's a 322-page document. Um, and I only talk about the biological the processes page. portion of it. Um, yeah. And it talks about wanting um, to deal with the, the population issue. They thought by 2030 that the world would be around... 15 billion people and they said they're going to have to come up with technology in order to to deal with that issue um uh, otherwise we would not be sustainable they are actually in that in that they report they talk about creating world war three and what the united states will look like after world war three that's what's crazy they say that the united states is going to be three separate countries it's <laughs> in that report and it was declassified i need to see that report yeah so there, there was a, there was another, there was a report that recently came out, and it's been talked about also over the last couple of years, where the birth rate in the U.S. is dropping. I think China is experiencing a drop in birth rate so much that they're removing their one-child policy or making some adaptation to it, some changes to it. And the concern here in the U.S. is that I'm not, do not take this as my position, okay? But the whole abortion thing. The resistance is that there's a there's a there's a really big drop in in birth rates, which could affect our military cap our military power, our prowess, our military prowess. If the if we lose our you know the bodies for for manning the you know the the, the fort, then we're going to have some issues. And and there was a report that said we're losing we're losing the, our birth rates are going down. If they drop between a certain percent, I think it's like two point something percent, then we're looking at you know, we're looking at a potential collapse of, of the birth rate, which again, it, it, there's all kinds Workforce, of implications. It's everything. Yeah. It, it, it could severely affect our economy. And, and that is which true. Is, I've, which I've is read the same contradictory reports. to that other, again, this is why I say that they're not in unison. They're not working together. They're all, there's like these compete. There's, there are scientists who are working or, or these organizations who are working on solving one problem that are in direct contradiction to the, the, the plans and intentions of other organizations who are working on the exact opposite problem. Yeah. So I don't here, know. Here's I mean, the, here, here's the scary part. Um, if, if this stuff isn't scary already, it is not scary enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, the United States has real stricter laws on experimentation, particularly when it comes to altering the the human genome. Mm. So, are we not funding other countries to do? Gain of research. Yes. Um, you're talking are about we funding millions and millions of dollars out there? You know why that happens? 
it's because they don't have the strict laws that we have with experimentation. That's a that's the, the elephant know, in the that's room. That's fine. They're, yeah, that, that's a big elephant in the room. The other thing is, guess what percentage of medications of the United States purchases from outside countries? It's ninety percent. Ninety percent. Google civilians or, or the civilian population it's, or it, it's medications period you don't get medications unless you go to a doctor and a pharmacist and you're prescribed it right yeah. so pre-filled syringes are 90 percent we're getting from outside our country Isn't now for true? now the net it's google it google it right now you know, I, google you can, what percentage I, I of our medications to, yeah, yeah i have to do that yeah <laughs> um sorry what what please continue yeah. So if if the majority of our medications are outsourced and other countries are allowed to experiment uh, on topics that we're not, you know, we're very restrictive of, if that's not an and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, because I, I, I don't believe what is happening is, is is a good thing. But if that's not a national security issue, um, than what is, uh, particularly if you, if you remember, even in that 2020 neuro in, implant, it talks about holy it shit sees and receives information. So if you want a national security threat, that's it. Democracy is done. America, as we know it is done if we don't wake up. Um, so that's oh, the implication. Um, yeah. I just, I did look it up and it's, yeah, that's it. Um, okay. So it, I'm not lying. It's 90%. Oh, yeah. So the, 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 this is, well, it's, it's vague. It says over 60. Well, oh, please allow me to, to, to kind of go over 60% yeah. of active pharmaceutical ingredients, APIs, the core components of medicine are imported primarily from two countries, India and China, specifically around 40% of these API come from India and 13% come from China while only 10% are produced domestically. Holy sh... <laughs> I'm sorry for cursing. I apologize. Um, so as you were saying, 10% of those medications, those those ingredients are, 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 are domestically... That's insane. Produced. We've just given up what is going our country. On here? <laughs> it looks like we're giving up our country. I don't... Yeah, I don't, I don't want to... So just for... Because for me, intellectually... I don't know what that. I mean, that's you. You anybody in their right mind would be like, I am right now. What WTF? What's going on here? But I don't want to jump the gun because I, I have to know why that is. Like I got to understand. I got to do some research and find out why that is. Because why? I mean, what's the? I, I hear what you're saying. I, I I I know this. I understand that we have restrictions that they do not. I don't know. Yeah. That, that's that's why we were funding China to do research for us. And so if, if, if you believe, you know, I, and I don't like to be associated as a conspiracy theorist. This is why I like to show proof um, yeah. whenever I'm talking about topics. But um, if, you know, there there's this movement to have this one world government, no borders. Um, yeah, but there's also a. a I, I don't know if you can do that in a democracy. China. Yeah, yeah. I don't know well, if you can do that in a democracy. I think we're, you know, and we have to ask ourselves then what's left if there's no democracy with the majority of the world? Um, you know? Well, they Those were mentioning the, how the theory, the, 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 the conversation right now is that there will be an AI for each institution and government, um, including lo smaller local AIs. For example, there could be an AI for the state of, you know, Alaska or the state of Wyoming or Texas or whatever. And the AI would collect information about the, you know, the culture and the, and the belief systems and the, the voting trends and so forth. Yeah. Um, and and then, then communicate with other AIs. And then, and then of course, then they, those AIs would communicate to a, a greater AI, the U S AI, and that UI would communicate with other. AI. So essentially we're all going to be every single aspect of our existence will be, governed by AI um, through data and the data um, and these data center. you know there's research papers that talk about the human node these biosensors mm. being in you so you're part of the internet of things so it you know you 
and, and yeah, IoT. there was strong belief that AI is a big part of this phenomenon right now. Well, remember what I said to you yeah. about that book, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is interesting. It's a whole other conversation, but this is disturbing. Yeah, this is very disturbing. Yeah. Um, I have to. I have a lot to think about because honestly, at this point, I there's information. There's new information you brought here to this conversation, um, and I don't quite know what to make of this. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't like to end on a, a Debbie Downer, so to speak, but um, but I do believe that the ultimate programmer, which is you know our higher power. Um, is more intelligent than what we're dealing with. And so I, I have faith that, you know, that um, our higher power is going to be much smarter. Um, and I'm hoping that he's laughing at the circus that's going on right now and that ultimately that uh, the good and the right thing is going to happen in the end. But we, we can't just sit back and... And, and continue to live our lives, um, you know, there's a reason why you're put under undue stress. You know, it makes you more susceptible to suggestibility. Stress is a big factor in that. When, when you look at the media, when you look at the television every day, when you turn it on or, you know, what are we seeing? Um, very little of it is positive and that's all constructed. It's not by accident. Um, so, you know, we're, I, I told you, you know, when we were talking about, you know, this AI thing and, and concept, you know, and I'm in conflict with it because, you know, I, I talked about my near death experience and, and right. what happened. And, you know, I was a six year old child and I went to the light. It was a kind of love that uh, I've never experienced and I wanted to stay there, but I wasn't allowed to. I was told it wasn't my time. And so it makes me question then, if it wasn't my time, does the ultimate programmer already know what the destiny is for me? Um, and so do we really have free will or is it all pre-programmed? Have I ever told you about my experience? No. I, I, the audience has heard it a million times. But I will tell you that I have had two experiences, um, several of them, but two th that are of note. Um, one experience, I saw a craft in my backyard um, when I was... I don't, I, I, at this point, I don't remember, at 13, maybe, um, 12, 13 years old. I was in a, in New Jersey, where my grandmother lived and my, my father lived. And the, the room that I stayed in was like a second living room. It's, loved it. It was awesome. There was a pullout couch in, the, in a sectional together. So the pullout couch, the, the sectional turned into a pullout couch. It filled the entire room. It was huge. It still is. Um, and, and so I would sleep on this huge bed instead of my room that my grandmother had for me. And on the opposite side of that wall where the, the sectional and couch were, there was a window. The window was so the size of the entire, the, the entire wall. And you could see through you know, those curtains, but the curtains were white. So it's you, if it's bright enough at nighttime, you can see through the curtains. And so I remember one night I it was late and I woke, I woke up and I saw this bright light that in my mind, I thought were the police. I won't get into my personal life too much, but my dad got into some things. So I thought maybe the cops were out back and they were going to take my dad. So I got up and I looked outside. I pe peeled the curtain back and it was just odd. This is the brightest light I've ever seen. That maybe there was multiple lights, like a bunch of cars, because there was also Mexicans that lived next door. And let me tell you something. In Jersey, Mexicans like to party, man. Those guys will work all day. Work all, and then they'll party all night. They're they're awesome people. They never give my grandmother problems. She ran out to Mexicans exclusively because they always pay. They always they, they they do their job. They work. They do their jobs, and they come home and they they party, and that's it. No problems. So I thought maybe it was the the, the next door, the Mexicans next door. But when I went to the window and looked outside, there were no cars outside. There was a disc, uh, disc shaped craft, typical UFO dome on top, um, and disc shaped. And it was, you know, hovering um, like this, you know, right above the trees. And there was a light that was shining from the bottom of the craft down to the grass. And it coned out. 
so that the, it kind of coned, you know, smaller to the craft and bigger towards the grass. And I thought, wow, that's really weird. There's a there's a UFO in my backyard. You know, there's this, this flying disc. No sound. And the odd thing to me was that the light was shining through the window. But when I opened the curtains, it was shining at the grass, not on the window. So I don't know how. It was like a very defined light. So I have no idea how there was light shining through the window. But it was. Now, like I said, when I when I noticed the light at the at the, the grass, I was looking at the circle that the light made on the grass. And as I did it, the light moved slowly towards me. And I the craft was just in my peripheral. But I was watching this circle, this this light, this cone circle light moving towards me. And as it moved towards me, I just watched it slowly, slowly moving towards me. And then all of a sudden it went up the wall of the house. And as it went through the window, the light like hit me. But it wasn't of like pain. It was just like it hit me and I just blacked out. When I opened my eyes, it was morning time. No idea what happened. Now, the second time that I had an experience with this, this whole thing, I was going through a divorce and I was staying at my cousin's house. And, uh, and we're talking, a, 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 this is a street with full of houses, full of people. There was, you know, there's no, there's no privacy whatsoever. But one night I was laying in the living room because that's where I slept. And I look through, you can see through the dining room, the kitchen, and to the backyard because the back door had a glass uh, door. And you could see through that and all the way through the backyard. It was a you know, straight shot. And I had this feeling of overwhelming fear and terror. Overwhelming. And I look up and I just knew that in my mind they were coming. And I'd never had, you know, I, I, don't, I don't remember any other experiences where I had this feeling of fear and terror and they were coming. I didn't know why I said that, but I just remember thinking in my head, oh, no, they're coming. And I wasn't thinking about them. Why are they coming? That's what went through my mind. Almost as if thinking about them makes them show up. And I look up again and there are the, through the through the back door, these beings, these creatures were went straight through the back door. They didn't open the door. They didn't, there was no noise. They just went straight through the back door like it wasn't even there. And they were not walking. They were hovering off the ground with their art and the, the typical gray, big head, massive black eyes. I mean, like they're just not, they were big. They were huge. And they had, you know, the whole dome head, the small little chin, the tiny little mouth, the tiny little slits for nose, no ears that I could see. And a suit that was like that cut off at the neck and the wrist was a one piece suit. So the wrists were were open. Their neck was you could see their neck where the cutoff was in there. And I guess their feet that were dangling and they had really long fingers and they were just like hovering. There were three or four of them. They were hovering towards me, not moving their arms or legs or anything, just just moving towards me. And I thought, oh, I'm like freaking out, like, please, like not tonight, begging like for this not to happen right now. And I look up at the time and I think I'm not going to forget this time. So I look at the clock and it's like 1130 at night. And then when I look back in front of me, one of them, they're all standing around me. And one of them is in my face. And I'm talking like if I were to move it, I'd kiss it. And it's uh, like its head was just so it covered all my vision. And its eyes were just like, the, they were the most terrifying thing. They were pure black. And in my mind, I heard it say, don't worry, we won't hurt you. And I blacked out and opened my eyes. Like almost like a second, just like, and then I opened my eyes and I look at the clock because I'm like, I'm, I'm still here. I look at the clock and it's 3.30 in the morning. I lost four hours of time. Have no idea what happened. No idea. So for well, I, I know 100% that you're telling me the truth. Because I've analyzed your cues, where you go for experiences and visualizations that you've experienced. So I know 100% that you're, the experience that you're explaining to me um, is 100% true. Um, well, I fight back tears and I, I fight back tears and fear because it was terrifying. And every yeah. time I think about it or talk about it, I'm like, I can remember. I'm there. And it's yeah. like, it's it's not great. Um, it wasn't pleasant, but I don't remember what happened. I have no idea what happened. I have no idea what they did. If they did anything, did they just show up just to, you know, like what, what happened? I have mm -hmm. no idea. I have no idea. Well, so if I'm ever down your way, um, I'd like to do an RF scan on you. 
So, I would be yeah. well. I'd be open to that. I would honestly be open yeah. to that because I. Yeah. I mean, hey, man, I, I want answers. Like, I just yeah. want them without having to relive that. I don't want to yeah. see that again. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I would be open to that. That that scan. Because if that was something that I mean, what for? What are you like? Here I am having these conversations. I'm doing this thing. I've been doing this thing for a few years now. Um, I've been in the tech field for forever. I mean, I've always been interested in technology, but it is interesting that I am a tech advocate to a fault, almost like a, an event, if you will, a tech evangelist, always talking about the potential benefits of what it could be. Um, I believe personally in a civilization, not that it will ever happen because I have a personal spiritual belief that contradict this this fantasy that there could be a utopia with technology but i know that humanity will not allow it we're just not built for that um whatever that in my perspective just to be clear but i also wonder if that were real like if it were not an illusion or if it were not a you know whatever like a, a, a hallucination or somebody putting those memories in my mind I will tell you there that experience was more real than this conversation right now. So it happened like in my mind, I'm not going to dismiss that it could be anything in my mind. It happened. It was an event. It happened like my everyday life happens day to day. If I, if that didn't happen, then I don't know if this is real. <laughs> I don't know if this conversation is real. I'll never know if anything that I, that I experience is real. That's how it feels mm -hmm. to me. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I'm, I'm right. So just please understand. I, I, I mean, I, I believe that people can be made to see things that they believe in their heart and their mind that it's right, that's real, and it's not. So I, you know. Yeah. No. Okay. I I completely relate to you. Um, so, you know, if we ever get that opportunity, I, I definitely like to do that for you. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. man, I, I took up a lot of your time this time, but there, this was a not only enlightening we, we lost we lost our third partner <laughs> i know and I, I wish we could i wish you could he was having all kinds of internet issues if you yeah background i think it was a, there's a lot of things going on he messaged me and said he's sorry but he's he's out he couldn't be in this there was a connection issue from the beginning so this sucks but again maybe you send me the information i would be op very open especially after reading more and more, more documentation and information have a better clarity on these things um, and also being mentally prepared for that conversation. I think I could, we could have another conversation in the future. Um, but this time we're not, I'm not going to lose that conversation. We will have yeah. this, this will be live. this will be live. So. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. And after you take it off record, I want to share I, something with you. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I want to say, uh, I have one question for you. What do you, because I'm thinking the audience is going to, is going to be curious. What do you think about the phenomena? What is your perspective? Hmm. I, I, my belief is right now that the majority of what people are experiencing is human intervention. Um, I think there's a small percentage that is not. Um, and right now, we just don't have the ability to explain what that is. Um, but I believe that eventually we'll get the full answer. Do you and I have a personal question that is related to this follow-up do you believe that humanity is in contact with a non-human intelligence not necessarily a one a two-way communication but in some way interacting with a a non-human intelligence not alien not yeah. extraterrestrial but any whatever it could be that's yeah. not human um i i would have to say when we define what non-human is and people in places of power have a way to manipulate language um, so that mm. it gets you to believe through inference one way and and not another so you know is non does non-human intelligence exist I, I think we would have to say yes now with the advent of AI and I can tell you I've mm had and witness some interaction um, with AI from a philosophical perspective, which would just knock your socks off. I, I, I could not believe that AI was at that level now. Um, so, um, you know, the ending is still being written. Um, mm -hmm. 
and what you shared with me earlier about that that book um the 180 mm-hmm. pages or so you know um i don't think anything's done by accident um most things are done on purpose so mm-hmm. we'll see we'll see where we go we'll see all right my friend well with that i i really appreciate you and um this is awesome i'm, I'm really i'm I, honestly I appreciate the fact-based data-driven conversation that we had today. Yeah. Um, that's what yeah. I appreciate the most. I want information. Yeah. I want data. I want, f- give me something I can hold on to, look at, read and, and use as a reference to the conversation. And you did that. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. I All right, Jesse, it. stick Make with me, brother. Platform. I'm going to, I'm going to, well. yeah, of course, absolutely. This is going to be everywhere. Yeah. Um, stick with me afterwards because I'm going to, I'm going to pull you off. But after the show, I'll try to end this for the recording. We're going to have a brief conversation about, you know, some things. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Jesse. Where can people find you? Um, you can reach us at Mind Nexus Live, M I N D N E X U S Live, L I V E dot com. And if you have any questions for me or you're interested on, you know, how would you get uh, an RF scan, um, you can just sign up there and send us a comment and we'll get back to you. All right. Thank you. And that information will be in the description of the video today. So. Thank you, Jesse. We'll uh-huh. catch you next time, my friend. Stay tuned, by the way. Stay, hey, stick with me. Don't don't leave yet. All right, brother. All right, everybody. We have with us Jesse. So that was awesome. Again, a, another. You guys didn't see the first one, but this was a very very intellectual conversation. I know. Again, the information was may have been a little bit hard to grasp for the layman, um, and I am an armchair philosopher, not an armchair medical professional. But there was so much information we could extrapolate ourselves from the data that was given. And I think you'll be able to do the same. So with that, my friends, I'll catch you all next time on the show, Dimension of Reality Podcast. I appreciate you guys. Love you. Stay vigilant. Keep searching for the truth and never stop pushing for disclosure. Peace. Cosmos collide, equations unravel, and the secrets reside. Doctor Forrest, the master, breaking the mold, unfolding the codes, letting truth be told. Navigating the unseen, drifting through space, contemplating the infinite, time's woven lace, exploring the unknown. With Dr. Door as our guide through worlds overgrown, bending reality, dancing through the fray. In the dimensions of wonder, we'll find our own way. Dancing with black holes, bypassing the strain. Wormholes like dreams, tethered to the vein. Einstein shadows linger, relativity's dance. In dimensions unknown, we catch a glance. The most of the cosmos, a rhythm divine. He shifts a new paradigm, a step in time. Exploring the unknown, where the seeds are sown. With Dr. Door as our guide through worlds overgrown. Bending reality, passing through. Of wonder, we'll find our way. The pulse of the cosmos, a rhythm divine. Each shift, a new paradigm, a step in time. Exploring the unknown, where the seeds are sown. With Dr. Door as our guide, the world's overthrown. Bending reality, passing through the fray. In the dimensions of wonder, we'll find our way. Search for the truth we always saw. Dr. Dawn leads us through the